Hey, this is Jared from Hunt and Fool. I'm here with Bob from Kinetrack. We're just running through the Kinetrack line. We kind of got a full walk down from it. I really appreciate that. You kind of run me through a whole bunch of different boot lines here. And, you bet. Um, should be some really interesting stuff to check out. Got some new insoles and uh, a whole bunch of other great gear. Now, the Desert Guide, how long have you had that one in your line? You've had that for quite a while. We just put that new out. Because that's the one I've wrestled back and forth between for a low top. Mm -hmm. What would talk to me about the difference between the hard scrabble hiker? Because that one's been in the line forever too. Yeah, yeah, that was one of our original boots. Yeah. But obviously, it's got this the new outsole. The new outsole. Yeah. So is that's, that that's the an primary from difference? This old outsole. No, it's actually it's it's actually got uh, no membrane, so it's much more breathable. But yeah, the Cordura. I don't remember when we actually went to actual Cordura because we did that that and this here. Right. I believe it was at the same time. So if you had a preference between these two, like my, my feet run super hot too. I like to, yeah. yeah, I think I'd probably lean this way. I, yeah, I like that boot there. So how, what, how would you recommend the Mountain Extreme versus Mountain Guide in what scenario? If you're you looking know, for a stiffer sole stiffer boot, Some people, it's like a really stiff boot. Right. But we developed this boot mainly for more for like the guys when they got 100 pounds of sheep meat on their back going through the scree rock. They want something that has awesome ankle support. Right, right. So they're looking for a stiffer boot where they're not going to twist their ankle. So this boot is, is, is probably more than the average person is ever going to need. So right. most people that mount are still in the mountain extreme. Everything they need. Gotcha. So, right on. Yep. And what's retail on the mountain guide? The guide is 480 for the non-insulated and 495 for the insulated. And then anything else in the? So this is the tactical you said. That's actually our military boot. Military what they boot. They call the LPC or the leather personnel carrier. Okay. It's all been military spec. We've actually got a retired military procurement officer that we've hired to, to oh, really? kind of work with our GSA guys, and so it's all specked out and ready to roll for the military guys so right on yep it's good enough for the military it's probably yeah. good enough for me right yeah exactly right well on. that comes in uninsulated and uh, 400 gram thin slate and 1000 gram thin slate and it also comes in steel toe in all three of those models oh wow so, um, yeah and i ran that bridger ridge high last year say, oh my gosh that thing is so comfortable we, i literally got to a trailhead in nevada uh, backpacking in the Table Mountain Wilderness there, oh, finally yeah. drew an elk tag there. I literally had the tags hanging on that pair of boots. Pulled them out, cut the tags off, threw them on, and we backpacked 66 miles in four days in there. <laughs> so it was a big risk. Yeah. I actually, in fact, I tied the first, like the first six miles up the trail to where we bivvied the first night, I actually tied an extra pair of boots on the outside just in, just case. in case. And then yeah, I left them, insurance. I stashed them on the side of the trail after that because I was like, dude, these things are awesome. These are gonna so, work. Yeah, super yeah, comfortable shoe. Underestimated demand on that a lot. We've been sold out for like six months. Are you serious? <laughs> That's, we missed her by a uh, touch, but we'll be ramping that one up a whole bunch. Uh, I can more. see why. Like I said, it was hands down my favorite light hiker I've ever ran. Yeah, like super yes, comfortable. I that thing. When I'm not when I'm not in work in office, that's what I got on my foot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and as, as I would expect from the Kinetrek, I feel like that boot, given all thing all things being equal, in that kind of a line, is mm -hmm. tougher and more durable than any I've ever ran. Line, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. We redid our, we kind of redid our, our safari boot too for like the Africa or hot weather boot here as well. So we got a different outsole on this. So a little bit harder outsole than we had on our, our first first generation. That's is that a, just that's again for boot. longevity for the most part? A little part? bit more durable, yeah. Right. That other one is just a little bit too soft and it was just getting ate up too quickly. So we went a little bit, a little bit heavier outsole on that, but right. still soft enough you can feel the rocks and sticks. Sure, yeah stock quietly yeah and then did you guys do anything new in the women's line this year uh we about the only thing we do i can't remember when we added we added the thousand gram insulate for the women oh, so it was always non-insulated and 400 but now we got the thousand in the women's too ah uh, that'll be perfect boot yes. for my wife yes her feet are always too cold <laughs> yeah. yeah right women's on. feet are always colder and so yeah same concept, so just a little bit. It's built on a true women's lat, though. They have a little bit narrower heel pocket okay. and a little bit narrower toe box, so it's built for women's feet. Yeah, that's a perfect uh, boot yeah, for for, for like a woman. serious hard like hardcore best woman's boot. On woman's the boot from yeah. backpacking to hunting, you name it. Yeah, we just had rave reviews on that one from the gals. Super so. positive feedback. Yeah. I can see why. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
it's like I said, it's also nice to work with people who are credible in the space too. Yep. There's not a lot of people that have had those kind of experiences on their boots yeah. that, own, that own boot companies. Yeah, I almost died on that hunt there. That was a chew gash hunt with my bow. <laughs> Did you kill that round with your bow? That was a bow kill, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, was it 14C? Yeah. Really? Yeah, October, it was about October 8th, I think, when I killed that thing and hit deep snow up in the cliff. I've, I've, everybody I know that has spent time in the Chugach in one way, shape, or form or another has told me they never want to go back. They're like, it's the most physical, terrifying place in the world. Even, I even almost the, died twice on that hunt. I mean, almost. I'm not talking really? figuratively. Yeah, I almost slipped off of like a 200 foot cliff twice. Yeah, two different times. It was like, just like broke loose and started sliding, or? Well, just, just hanging on ledges like and by stuff, trying to get up through stuff, and yeah, I mean, there's a couple times I got into some pretty iffy situation where it could have went either way pretty easily, and <laughs> thankfully it went the right way. 